The houseplant world is more competitive than ever. We're going to talk about why some houseplant shops are closing and some of the biggest, most notable closures in the houseplant world, including Plant Arena from YouTube and how they're stopping shipping and selling houseplants. I feel like more and more as I'm scrolling through Instagram, I'm finding and coming across, unfortunately, a lot of IG accounts that are saying that they're going out of business, which is super sad because for a lot of people, this was their dream and this was their dream to leave their nine to five. But a lot of places like this business up in San Francisco, after only eight or nine months, they were shutting their doors. Now, a lot of these businesses had been around since the kind of mid 2010s, but a lot of these were pandemic plant shops. This comment summarizes the houseplant world very succinctly. This is from 2022 and the person says, the plant store thing is overdone at this point. It was a pandemic related fad where everyone was stuck at home, tending to plants became cool. Don't get me wrong, plant and plant stores are great, but too many plant stores have opened for the actual demand. This is spot on. And then right below it, these plant stores are too expensive. So the first comment is dead on. There has been an oversupply, especially in the pandemic. 2020 brought in a bunch of plant sellers and a bunch of people that opened brick and mortars, which are very expensive. And because of that expensive storefront price, even in the cheapest areas of like the Midwest or Salt Lake City or these cheaper real estate markets, you're still going to spend a couple grand a month on a plant shop all the way up to like 10,000, 15,000 a month in somewhere like New York City. And they have to keep those plant prices high in order to pay that rent. And many times these are not small little plant shops that have been open maybe one or two years. For the Little Leaf plant shop, it looks like they were open for seven years and they opened in 2016, which hits home for us because we opened in 2017. And I'm not going to lie, the last two years, three years after 2020, it has been very tough post pandemic with all the competition to stay open but it looks like the one thing all these places have in common is having a brick and mortar storefront, which absolutely bleeds you dry. It's super cute, it's awesome to have, but from a business standpoint, it's just not usually a great idea. We actually closed our brick and mortar in 2020, and we left the space, I believe 2021, because we were paying like three grand a month in rent, in addition to having a growing location at the warehouse that we still have. And it's incredibly painful to leave spaces like that and kind of shut your doors. But in order to keep the business alive and keep doing what you're doing, sometimes you have to do that. This one came out a couple days ago. This is Ill Exotics out in Philadelphia. It looks like they tried to start a GoFundMe back in August of 2023, but literally yesterday, one day ago, so January 3rd, they put this post up going at a business sale. And this is Franco and Christopher. They sell reptiles and even Summer Rain Oaks did a piece on them and made a video with 140,000 views a year ago. And they had a gorgeous space. But here is the storefront in Philly, super high Google reviews. But again, the thing that tends to be all in common with a lot of these places is the storefront. And not to say it's not hard for a lot of the online only plant stores like us and many of the other brands and shops out there. One in LA that happened over in 2023 through the midway point was the Plant Chica. She and her husband got pushed out of their space in LA because the landlord was preparing to develop the space and was going to sell the building. So it's just really hard to hold on to retail space that could be developed into apartments. And meanwhile, you're competing with Costa Farms, Home Depot, Walmart, Kroger, and just about any other hardware store or big box store selling plants. I mean, even friggin' Macy's sells live plants now. Macy's.com sells ZZ plants. This is the classic big company versus mom and pop. And I think there was just an oversupply of plant stores during the pandemic. And now we're seeing that overhyped market, that demand side fall back and people are leaving the industry. Of course, we need to rebalance. We're going to see a leaving of plant stores, which is really sad. This one sucked to see because I just met Jacob from Plants Choto. And he was a super sweet person. His mom's personality is electric and they're unfortunately closing down their shop too. This is only seven weeks ago. So I am unfortunately seeing like an acceleration of these, you know, these are big accounts too. Like Ill Exotic had like 30 some thousand followers. Plants Choto was a huge impactful greenhouse here in Southern California, you know, and, and of course there is the route for GoFundMe. 
I know Ill Exotics raised some money through their GoFundMe and the Plant Chica raised $51,000. But there is a little bit of a moral question to me because it is a business. So just like us, we've lost money the last few years, but you take on corporate debt, you take on what you have to because it's a business at the end of the day. That's how I view it personally. The market has become a very fragmented market where there is a bunch of individual sellers that mostly sell on Facebook without transaction costs. They don't have storefronts and things like that. So they're able to chop and prop and sell off just a few cuttings. And for instance, on Plant Purge USA, there's 68,000 people in this group where people just purge their plants and just sell their plants. Payments are typically done through Venmo and typically off the main payment processors like PayPal goods and services and a brick and mortar plant shop just can't compete with that. So before we talk about Plant Arena, remember seasonality in the plant world. Every May, people start Googling plant store and typically our best months of the year in person or on e-commerce are April through the middle of summer. And every December, you have some of the lowest search traffic. And try and avoid having a brick and mortar. That extra three to $5,000 a month which has to be paid from profit of selling or retailing plants. And most margins on houseplants are like 20 to 35% at best if you're buying from a broker or a grower at wholesale. And by the way, the wholesale to Facebook price parity is almost the same. I get wholesale prices and the prices I'm seeing things go for on Facebook are almost identical. The good thing I guess about buying at wholesale is that you can buy 10 or 100 units of something, whereas Facebook, it's usually one off. Here's one caramel marble for 300 bucks, whereas you can buy 10 or 100 caramel marbles from 300 bucks. But a brick and mortar just can't compete with that. So let's talk about Plant Arena. One million subscribers here on YouTube, and she's been making content on YouTube since 2018. Her channel has over 130 3 million views in its lifetime. Congrats to her on hitting a million subscribers. I mean, that is crazy. But if you look at the links here, it links to her Instagram and plantarena.com, which this page comes up. Plantarena is officially closed for business. Thank you for your patronage over the years and we'll miss you. And you can't go anywhere on the website. This is super curious for a million subscriber account on YouTube. And they've been shipping plants for years. And this is the last update I saw last time I was on the site maybe a month or two ago when it first came out. This was in October. As of October 12th, we will no longer be selling plants, pots, or accessories. We hope you'll continue to visit the site for plant care and exciting new content. But it says you'll be able to come back to the site for new content. So it's interesting. I'm hoping they're working on the site. I reached out to Amanda and I believe the other woman who's running the business to see if there were any updates because this is such a big deal. And the top comment on this thread about Plantarina is, my guess, since the plant bubble has burst, the business just wasn't making a profit anymore. No one to hold them and no one to fold them. And that's super true. But also at the same time, if you're building a brand like Plantarina, it seems silly just to stop all updates and content of the business also. Because if you go to her latest videos, she hasn't posted since like November, since before Thanksgiving. And this is a huge channel. I mean, some of her most popular videos have 4 million views. Granted, it's from years ago, back when like how to's would really work on YouTube and the more latest videos are, I guess, less popular, but still it's quite a big brand and it's just very odd for them to go away. I could speculate as to why, but I think that Reddit comment is a really good guess. And I believe there was a partner in the business, so things can always go, you know, different there, but I'm just speculating. So if you're a plant shop, try and hold it together as best as possible. Remember that it gets better in spring. And if you enjoyed this video, please click the like button down below. It helps us out so much. And click subscribe so you can come back next week for another video about plants. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you next week.